So ever since the New Zealand shooting, there's been news breaking every day, every couple of days of attacks on mosques in the UK. Uh, they've ramped up security for mosques in Birmingham because people attack them with sledgehammers. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and stay calm on this video. I'm gonna try and not get angry because I believe that when you get angry, when you get annoyed, then it just, it disintegrates what you're trying to say and it doesn't help you in any way to get your point across. What I'm gonna to say to these people who are attacking these mosques or who feel like they might go out and attack a mosque because of what this idiot did in New Zealand, what this terrorist did in New Zealand and that, that they wanna copy him for some reason, for whatever reason it is in their minds. A lot of these people like to say that Muslims don't, don't integrate, they don't adapt, their faith isn't adaptable with Western, modern day Western progressive liberal society. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, we've got millions of Muslims in the UK. They drive buses, they drive cabs. When, when you go out on the piss, when you go out to the pub, to the club, wherever you go, and you get drunk, they drive the cabs to take you home. They serve your food when you go to the curry house. They fix you up when you're sick and you go to hospital. These people sweep the roads. They work in the shops where you buy your goods. They to do pretty much anything. Many of them even serve in the armed forces of this country. So I'd say they've adapted. In fact, some Muslims, many Muslims even, are in the public eye. People like Mo Farah, Amir Khan, sporting personalities. They are in the public eye. I've got such an itchy nose, excuse me. They are in the public eye. These people are famous, they have established, they're successful, successful sports personalities, media personalities, you know, writers, authors, singers, songwriters, musicians, performers. Pe Muslims have come to the UK or they were born in the UK and they have succeeded. They have made a successful name for themselves. They've made loads of money. I'd say they've adapted. Muslims have been born in the UK or have come to the UK and they've taken on jobs. They've taken on professions, careers, they're paying tax. They're paying a mortgage. They've adapted. It's not that Islam isn't compatible with Western society. It's not that Muslims can't adapt to Western society. They can, and they have, and they are. You see, every time you see a Muslim on the street, you're seeing a Muslim that has adapted his belief, adapted his faith, and adapted himself into our society. What isn't compatible with Western society is Islamic extremism. Don't conflate the two. Muslim doesn't mean extremist. Muslim doesn't mean terrorist. Don't get the two confused. Jihadists and ISIS, ISIS fighters, ISIS believers, ISIS supporters, they are not compatible with Western society. So if you feel like getting a sledgehammer and smashing up a mosque full of people who have no links to extremism, have no links to jihadism, what you're doing is you're giving ISIS and you're giving people like Brenton Tavern exactly what they want. And they want people to hate everyday Muslims who are just minding their own business. They just want to pray to their God and they just want to pay their taxes, go to work and live their life and be left alone. But what you're doing is you're alienating these people. You're making them feel vulnerable. And when these people feel vulnerable, they are likely or more likely than they would be if they didn't, didn't feel vulnerable to sympathize with ISIS to maybe pot potentially support ISIS or support these groups, <coughs> excuse me, maybe feel what these groups are doing. Because if you think about it, imagine you're a 16 year old Muslim boy or girl. You love this country, you were born in this country, you consider it home. All of a sudden, along comes some lunatic, Tommy Robinson or Brenton Tarrant for instance, who shoots up a mosque full of people who happen to be your faith. And well, along comes someone like Tom, like Tom Robinson. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold, so I'm <coughs> trying to keep it under wraps. Uh, but, um, someone like Tommy Robinson, you know, Paul Goldian, James Goddard, who come along and they tell you, you're not compatible with Western society. Your, your faith isn't compatible. People who follow your faith aren't welcome in the UK. There should be a ban on Muslims. How quickly do you think that child could be now radicalized by someone who approaches them in the street, online, wherever, and says, look, 
Britain clearly doesn't like you, that they don't want you, that you're not welcome in Britain. The country you were born and bred in, you're not welcome in. How quickly do you think that child could be radicalised now? People like the far-right terrorists, Brent and Terran, and the far-right extremists, Tommy Robertson, Paul Golding, people like that, they are, they are just breeding extremism. They are creating the potential for extremism by their hate preach, because they are not distinguishing Islamic extremists from everyday, regular Muslims. They're not separating the two. If Tommy Robinson only spoke about Islamic extremists, only spoke about ISIS, only spoke about Islamic fighters, Islamic terrorists, I might be more inclined to agree with him. But he doesn't. He actually stood on stage and he said, every single Muslim watching this video, you got away with it. Didn't say every jihadist, every Islamist, every Islamic extremist, every ISIS support, every single Muslim. Period. That's what he said. And then he said, we should ban Muslims from coming to the UK. All Muslims. Not, not Muslims. With, didn't even say Muslims with a proven link to terrorism. Didn't even clarify that point. All Muslims. So he's alienating and he's demonising a group based on what a subsection of that group, a tiny minority, are doing. So when you go into a mosque and you smash it up, the people that regularly attend that mosque, or the people that attend the mosques in the area, they might feel too intimidated or, or frightened to go to mosque in the immediate future. And with the right guidance from their peers, from their community, or maybe even the right professional help, counselling, they will get over that. They will, will eventually resume their regular lives of going to mosque and praying. And the wherever you damage, the windows, the doors, the walls you might damage, the property, whatever, that, that, that will eventually be repaired or replaced. <coughs> and the people that go to that mosque, they will move on. Even the people that attend the mosque that was shot, or the two mosques that were shot in Christchurch, they will eventually move on from that tragedy and they will go on with their lives. They will keep attending that mosque and they will just eventually move on from it. They will never forget it, but they will move on and they will go back to their normal lives. So all that damage that you do with that sledgehammer, it can, all be, it can all be fixed. It will all be fixed eventually. What you may find a lot harder to fix is the complete arse you make of yourself by running into a mosque and smashing the place up because you do not understand it. Now, if you're going to a mosque or a church or a synagogue or any place of worship and you are not a member of that faith, you should be going to learn something about that faith, to engage. You should be going for a cup of tea and a chat with the imam or the priest or the rabbi or whoever it is, or whatever religious authority it is. And you should, you should be willing to learn something, to discuss religion with these people. That's why you should be going to any place of worship if you are not a follower of that particular faith. You may learn something, you never know. You have a lot more to gain from talk from dialogue than you have to gain from smashing someone up or smashing up a building with a sledgehammer purely because you do not understand the faith, because you don't understand it and part of you doesn't want to understand it. You have so much more to gain from actual conversation with people. Seriously. Seriously. I'm not even angry. It's just, it's ignorance at its finest. And if you're supporting these people, again, you have so much to gain from talking to people, from communication, than from simply abusing people or insulting people on the street or smashing up their buildings because you do not fully understand them, their belief, and how they can follow a belief which is taken out of context and twisted by these people over here who are extremists. So if you're worried about Islamic extremism, as you should be, as anyone should be, walk up to a Muslim Engage with a Muslim. Obviously don't start with it, but engage with a Muslim. Ask them about their faith. Ask them about what they believe. And then eventually get round to a conversation of ISIS. You will find many Muslims abhor ISIS. Can't stand groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and other Islamist groups. I'm sure you will find that. All the polls su suggest that most Muslims 
do not condone Islamic extremism and Islamic terrorism in any way, shape or form. Talk to them, ask them. So what do these people, do these people represent you? When they naturally say no, you will say, well, what about the, the, the verses in the Quran that they cite? The, the actual beliefs, that, the actual teachings that they follow. What about that? And they will explain to you. I don't follow, I don't believe in those things. I don't follow those things. So dialogue, conversation, communication, that is what is important. Please, people, wake up, be a little bit open-minded, and you will go miles, a lot more than you will with a sledgehammer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.